It has again been an honor and a pleasure to welcome Mario Suarez to the White House. He came here a year ago as Vice President of the Socialist International and now returns as Prime Minister of Portugal. He's truly an international personality, a valiant supporter of Western values and ideals, and a man of great personal courage. As Prime Minister of Portugal, he represents a close and valued ally, one of the founding members of the North Atlantic Alliance. We regularly seek his counsel, and again today we've had valuable and extensive discussions. Prime Minister Suarez and I examined economic matters of importance to both our peoples. I assured the Prime Minister that the United States will continue to do all that is feasible to assist Portugal in meeting its difficult economic challenges. In another vital area of cooperation, we discussed the bilateral mutual security arrangements renewed last December. Under these arrangements, Portugal is playing a significant role in protecting the freedom of the Western democracies and maintaining world peace. The responsibility she demonstrates reflects well on the character of Portugal's people and her leaders. And today, I reaffirm to Prime Minister Suarez that the United States stands ready to help modernize the Portuguese armed forces. We applaud Prime Minister Suarez and Portugal's commitment to a strong and effective NATO alliance, and we wish them well as they move to join the European communities. The Prime Minister and I exchanged views on the present situation and outlook in the Middle East and Central America, regions in which he has had a long and deep interest and concern. And certainly we benefited from his insights. We had an especially useful discussion of the outlook for peaceful settlements of the conflicts in Southern Africa. Portugal's historic interest in Africa and her cultural, economic and political ties of today add much weight to Prime Minister Suarez's judgments in this area. We agreed that regular consultations between our two governments on African questions are useful for us both, and we will continue this practice. I want to thank Mario Suarez for his visit and our forthright exchange of ideas. He is a special friend, as well as an important leader. And I wish him Godspeed and look forward to our meeting again. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Senhor Presidente, quero em primeiro lugar expressar o meu agradecimento pelo convite do Presidente dos Estados Unidos para visitar oficialmente Washington e manifestar o prazer que tenho pela oportunidade que me foi dada para renovar, agora como chefe do governo português, as relações amigáveis e os contactos que estabeleci no passado com o Presidente Reagan e a administração americana. Durante este período, aprendemos a respeitar as suas qualidades de desfia, Sr. Presidente, a forma resoluta como enfrentou as situações delicadas, tendo sempre em mente a defesa dos interesses fundamentais do mundo ocidental, inseparáveis da defesa da liberdade. Os contactos entre os governantes dos dois países, que se devem considerar normais, tratando-se de dois países aliados no seio da NATO, que mantêm desde há muito estreitas relações de cooperação, assumem neste momento particular importância, dada a vontade que existe de ambas as partes, de enfrentar o nosso relacionamento, uma dinâmica nova, que agora foi dado um importante impulso à nossa cooperação no domínio da defesa, após a renovação do Acordo das Lages. A solidez das relações entre Portugal e os Estados Unidos da América não se explica por uma identidade ocasional de posições ou por momentânea coincidência de interesses, mas sim pela comunhão sincera e profunda de valores e de ideais como a liberdade, a democracia e o respeito pelos direitos do homem em que acreditamos e que vivemos. Para a amizade que nos une, muito contribuem os membros da comunidade luso-americana que vivem neste país e que aqui dão testemunho dos sentimentos que o povo português nutre pelo povo americano. Diante as questões que tivemos 
a oportunidade de abordar, queria salientar as que se relacionam com a situação na África Austral, região do mundo, onde se estão a dar neste momento passos muito importantes no caminho da paz. Portugal que mantém com os povos dessa região, nomeadamente com Moçambique e Angola, seculares relações de amizade, tem dedicado aos problemas da área atenção muito particular. Após o processo de descolonização que levou a cabo em 1974 e que tem feito todos os possíveis esforços no sentido de contribuir para a criação de um clima de diálogo e de solução pacífica dos problemas. Também abordámos a situação na América Central e na América do Sul. Penso que as iniciativas do Grupo de Contadora, bem como todas as que vierem a ser tomadas no sentido de estimular o processo democrático e a instauração de regimes de autêntica liberdade nos países da região, devem merecer todo o nosso apoio. Dados os laços culturais existentes entre os países ibéricos e os países da América Latina, criados por uma longa comunhão de história e pelo uso da mesma língua, Portugal tem acompanhado de perto a evolução da situação nesses países e mantido contactos estreitos com as forças democráticas que aí lutam pela defesa dos princípios da liberdade. Foi-me ainda muito grato verificar que os Estados Unidos e Portugal partilham de pontos de vista muito próximos quanto às relações leste-oeste e quanto à necessidade do reforço da Aliança Atlântica com vista a suster as ameaças expansionistas e a contribuir para a paz do mundo. Mr. President, I would like at the outset to express my appreciation to the President of the United States for his invitation to make this official visit to Washington and to say how pleased I am to have been afforded this opportunity to renew, now as head of the Portuguese government, the contacts and friendly relationships which I established in the past with President Reagan and the American administration. During this period, we have learned to respect your leadership qualities and the straightforward way in which you have handled delicate situations while always keeping in mind the fundamental values of democracy. Contacts between the leaders of our countries, which should be considered normal between two NATO allies which have maintained close relations over a long period, now assume special importance in view of the readiness of both parties to imbue our relationship with a new dynamic following the important impetus to our cooperation in the defense area provided by the renewal of the Lages base agreement. The sound relations existing between the United States and Portugal are not the result of occasional identical positions or passing convergence of interests. They are rather the result of a sincere and profound sharing of values and ideals, such as freedom, democracy, and respect for human rights, principles in which we believe and which we practice. The Luso-American community residing in this country, which here bears witness to the affection in which the Portuguese hold the American people, greatly contributes to the friendship which unites us. Among the issues which we have had the opportunity to address, I wish to emphasize those related to Southern Africa, a region of the world where important steps on the road to peace are now being taken. Portugal, which maintains centuries-old ties of friendship with the people in this region, namely with those of Mozambique and Angola, has devoted particular attention to the problems of this area following the process of decolonization carried out in 1974, and has spared no effort to contribute to the creation of a climate of dialogue and peaceful solutions to the problems of the region. We also considered the situation in Central and South America. I believe the initiatives of the Contadora Group as well as all those directed towards advancing the democratic process and establishing regimes guaranteeing true freedom in the countries of the region are deserving of our support. The cultural ties existing between the Iberian countries and Latin America, stemming from a long-standing commonality of history and language, lead Portugal to take profound interest in the evolution of the situation in the countries of this region and to maintain close contacts with those forces seeking to uphold the principles of liberty in that part of the world. It was very gratifying for me to note that the United States and Portugal share very similar points of view regarding east-west relations and the need to strengthen the Atlantic Alliance in order to resist expansionist threats and contribute to peace.
concerned. Should he withdraw his name, Mr. President? Should he take no. his name out? No. What about this latest loan? Did he forget? Why didn't he declare the money? Why did he hide it? I don't think he hid it, and I think he will make it clear when he testifies. So you're not going to withdraw it? No. Do you think he'll be confirmed, sir? Yes, sir. Well, thank you all very much, ladies and gentlemen.